and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? V for Vienna. <laughs> nice. It's a Vienna lager. <laughs> Today we're going to bring to you 1960s Village of the Dam. This movie is directed by Wolf Rila. He's actually a German director and he did lots of stuff, but we're going to mention one short that he did called Jesse! <laughs> Jesse! Take it back here, Jesse! Jesse! It's based on the 1957 novel The Midwich Cuckoos by John Wyndham. George Sanders is in this and he's in a shitload of stuff. One of his last movies we gotta mention is Psychomania or The Death Wheelers. He was also Mr. Freeze in the original Batman series. Barbara Shelley is in this and she's kind of a horror movie icon too. She was in Quartermass in the Pit, Rasputin the Mad Monk. <laughs> Rasputin. <laughs> and she's in Dracula, the Prince of Darkness. Village of the Dam starts off with our main character, Gordon Zellaby. He's talking on the phone with his friend. It suddenly gets all kind of woozy and just collapses. Then it shows different members of this small town. Guys riding a tractor just <laughs> passes out. The woman's ironing and just leaves, leaves the off. iron there on and passes out. <laughs> So burning up her favorite dress. Everyone in the whole village, just for no reason, goes unconscious. Alan Bernard, who was on the phone earlier with Gordon, goes to the village to see what's going on, and he runs into a policeman. They get talking. The policeman says, yeah, I'm looking for this bus that never showed up at his destination, and we don't know where it is, and they go but further down the road, and the bus is in the ditch. Policeman gets on his bike to go check it out, and <laughs> he just fucking bails on his bike. Like you did a whole bunch of times <laughs> last year. <laughs> Yo, yeah. And he wasn't even drunk. No. Anyone that goes past this point just goes unconscious for no reason. They bring in the whole military. They got guys with gas masks on. The guy with the rope. Passes out. They drag him back in. <laughs> yeah. Flying big planes. Not much happening in the village. In fact, nothing's moving at all. <laughs> Ooh, the plane <laughs> just yeah. boom, blows up. Out of nowhere, everyone wakes up and it's like nothing happened. But two months later, all the women in the village are suddenly pregnant. Even women that are still virgins. Right. And the doctors are ah, I won't tell anybody, you know, <laughs> it's okay. Like they don't believe the fact that they're still virgins. One woman's husband just got back, finds out she's pregnant, <laughs> and he wasn't there to conceive. He's all fuming at the table. Yeah. And He's all drinking all that whiskey, yeah, Super dude. drinking hard. <laughs> We didn't see this pub, this awesome looking pub. That I want to drink there yeah. so bad. British neighborhood yeah. pub. Oh. It's packed up with all the men because all the women are giving birth <laughs> at the same time over at the hospital. And back in the day, while well, the men didn't go to the hospital, they went, to the, they went and drank. <laughs> They know what's coming. <laughs> all these children are born on the same day. And they all kind of have these weird, same, strange features. Also starting to grow really fast and learn like four times faster than the average kid. One day, Gordon is in one of the rooms of the house talking with some people. Loud, shrieking screams and they run in, find his wife, Anthea, with her hand in a pot of boiling water. Turns out that she must have gave the baby some milk that was too hot and it burned the baby's mouth. The baby took his revenge on her. Three years later, we see Gordon starting to study these kids a little more, right? This oriental puzzle box that you need to go through like 10 steps to open it up. And he shows one kid and then he takes the box to another kid who didn't see and he knows how to do it. For some reason, they all seem to have this telepathic link. The kids are walking across the street. Some guy in a car, he, he narrowly misses one of the kids. And the kids turn around and, and the eyes start glowing. And the guy just gets into a trance, gets into his car, and just fucking floors it right into a brick wall. And just the car blows, <laughs> blows up. up. Like, holy shit. That guy's brother knows that the kids did that. Gets himself a shotgun. And the kids see this and they make him turn the gun on himself and blow his fucking head off. While Gordon and his wife are watching, no less. <laughs> yeah. And they're stuck in a trance. The military wants to dispose of these kids almost. Gordon doesn't quite like this. He wants to keep the kids alive and he wants to study them. Give me a year. They reluctantly give him the year. 
the townsfolk, they're all in the pub drinking and yeah. This isn't right. This has to stop. You know, they all barge out with the torches yeah. and pitchforks <laughs> yeah. and everything and go to the schoolhouse to, I guess, end the kids. Kids fucking turn the tables on them. Oh! <laughs> burn themselves alive? Like, fuck. Finally, the kids need to start branching out and... Spreading. Yeah. And they need Gordon to help them do this. That's where we're gonna end the plot. If you wanna see what happens at the end of Village of the Damned and what Gordon's gonna do about all of this, keep watching. So why should everyone watch Village of the Damned? I think we gotta start with the story. The story is probably one of the best sci-fi horror stories ever. Yeah, I completely agree. It's up there with The Thing. You mentioned The Thing, Outpost 31, right? Yeah. There's nowhere to go because of it's storming out. You kind of feel like that here. Even though you're in a village and there's the expanse everywhere around that you can leave, yeah. it's almost as if the kids aren't letting anybody go anywhere. It makes you feel claustrophobic almost. Even though it isn't. There's yeah. all these open <laughs> fields and everything, but it still feels claustrophobic. <laughs> yeah. MGM was supposed to shoot this in America with like American actors and politics got involved and because the plot contained virgin births at the time that was kind of like ooh, we don't want to touch that you know the church will get mad right who the fuck cares so they actually had to go and shoot it in britain because i think it works better well it takes place there anyways so yeah it works a lot better and the movie is only an hour and 15 minutes long so it really packs a punch too it takes place over multiple years <laughs> within an hour and 15 minutes crams it all in perfectly exactly yeah. pacing is so good the characters are great. Gordon's character arc from the start of the movie to the end of the movie, from a loving, doting father to somebody who decides to end things. Yeah, yeah, it's great. You know, you know he's happy that he's going to be a father. <laughs> the kids get born and they're kind of weird, but he still loves the kid. And then everyone else wants to kill the kids. He's the only one sticking up for him. Yeah. But at the end, he's the one that's like, ah, oh, fuck, they got to go. <laughs> for a 1960 film, the deaths in this are actually pretty cool, you know? And even though you don't see everything that happens, the fact that it's implied is pretty shocking, actually. Like, the guy blowing his head off. Yeah. The shot of him putting the shotgun under his chin is enough to, like, oh, and then you hear it, and you see everyone's reactions to it. Pretty shocking, even though you don't see it. Exactly, and the fact that nobody can move or help, probably even worse. is terrifying, yeah. <laughs> you're forced to watch, even though you don't want to. <laughs> these kids are fucking evil, man. There's also a moral debate, too. How are you going to bring these kids up? What are you going to do with them? What's the right thing to do? I found it funny that nobody chose to let them develop and grow and live their lives and see what happens. It's either let's use them to our benefit as part of like a military action or kill them. <laughs> fearing what you don't understand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what this movie is about. How like the town is like a witch hunt. Because it's beyond their control, they feel like they have to end it. But what if these kids could really benefit society? They don't even want to think about that. They just want to think about let's... Let's end it, because we don't understand it. So it's a real neat moral debate in this. It's almost as if the kids are bringing up the parents. The kids are in charge. The kids are in charge, totally, yeah. And the parents have to do what they say. Them being kids, they need to be brought up. They couldn't live on their own. No. Yeah. And so... I like that too, the right? The codependency. Yeah. There's the dynamic there. Yeah. The movie looks amazing. Like, you kind of forget that it's a black and white film mm -hmm. because it's shot so well. Even though it's black and white, you can almost see the colors just because it's lit so well, like the countryside. Mm -hmm. You can see the green, even though it's black and white. There's no real dark scenes in yeah. this movie, which is interesting because it's a horror movie. Yeah. Usually you'd expect a lot of dark, yeah. seedy scenes, right? It's bright, it all happens in the daytime, which I've always liked too because, you know, bad things can happen during the day. This movie did have a sequel, and it was called Children of the Damned. It's good, but it's, okay. it's, it's not as good. It's not as poignant yeah. as this movie is. And there was also a remake that was done by horror movie legend and master John Carpenter, which actually isn't all that great, yeah. surprisingly. Also, it doesn't surprise me, too, because this movie is good enough. Like, it, this movie, I think, is a masterpiece. It doesn't need to be remade. Exactly. So even someone as good as John Carpenter remaking it, there's nothing that you can really make better or build upon or do better. It's just kind of like, yeah, leave it. It's not like The Thing, where The Thing needed an update. This doesn't need an update. No, not at all. It seems phoned in. Yeah, yeah, you just kind of, okay, yeah. let's do it. Let's yeah. 
fulfill the contract obligation yeah. and just be done with it. Yeah, it's got some great actors in it. You know, Christopher Reeves is in it. It just has this kind of like made-for-TV feel to it where there's no spark, you know? If you haven't seen Village of the Damned, definitely check it out. I'm surprised it doesn't make more lists or anything. It's fucking fantastic. Exactly, yeah. You know, it, it does everything perfectly. It's a great story. I can't think of, there's not one thing I could say this flawed about this movie at all. Definitely up there with the greats. Yeah. Even if you're one of those people kind of like, ah, black and white movies, eh, fuck, check it out. You won't even notice it's in black and white. It's it's a masterpiece, and I think everyone's got to see it. And until next time, keep drinking. <laughs>